Hi there, it's Karen Leba with VintageDazzle.Etsy.com here with another vintage haul from the flea market. Yay! Uh, it's so much fun to go back to the flea market and I'm still not back in, in perfect form because I'm still kind of getting excited and paying too much for things occasionally, but, but I did get some good stuff this time so, uh, and, and some jewelry. Um, but first I want to show you a couple of eBay lots that I bought. Um, this is fun. I bought, this is a big box full of old broken watches, and they're old, old, old ones. Really, really neat. This one, this one whines and ticks, but the hands don't move. This one's the best of the lot. <laughs> this is the only one I could get to. Sorry, I had to do a battery change. Uh, so I was saying, I believe that there are 25 watches in this lot. And I believe I paid about $25, so that's like a dollar a watch. And there's not going to be any way to rehabilitate these watches. They're, they're too far gone, but I got them for a reason. I've always wanted to make one of those bracelets out of old watches that you see. Like you hook a whole bunch of old watches together. There's, oh, most of these, are, I would say, are from the 1920s. They're really old. This sweet one. So, um, anyway, I'm not going to show you every single one, but there is a big baggie full of watches here. So, uh, stay tuned for a craft project coming up, maybe. <laughs> Who knows when I'll actually get around to it. And then the other lot that I bought was these three Canadian souvenir bracelets. We have this one. Not exactly sure of the ages on these, but they're really sweet. Um, here's one silver plated, I think, with the uh, different scenes, different famous buildings and things. In Canada, and then this one, this one's probably more like um, late 1950s to 1960s because it does have the Aurora Borealis rhinestones. That's going to be post-1955. I'm sorry if you can hear my husband teaching his bridge class. It's really loud. But anyway, so... Um, uh, I think I paid about $30 for the three of these, including everything, shipping and everything. I don't remember exactly because I bought them a while ago. But, okay, so that's it for eBay, and I'm going to show you the jewelry I got at the flea market. Um, so first we have this, which is a lovely probably 1960s, mid-century um, lucite, confetti lucite bracelet. Uh, it doesn't appear to be marked. It does have an issue in that one of the stems is out, but that'll take two seconds to glue back in. And I paid $8 for that. And then bought this Siam Silver. Um, I don't usually go out of my way to buy Siam Silver. It's pretty common, especially the kind that's just the black and the silver. But I really like this one because of the colors. They were a little unusual. The red and the white enamel, the gold finish. And it is, it is on sterling silver. It just has a gold wash on it. So I paid 10 for that one. Then from my buddy Alex, oh boy. He's a tough bargainer, I'm telling you. There's a little um, sterling silver locket that's um, Victorian style, bright cut engraved, but probably dates from the 1980s, I would say. These were, I don't know who was doing these, maybe more than one company, but they were really, really popular for a while there. And um, they're just marked 925, it's hard to tell. Um, 
this one might have. Uh, yeah, this one's got another mark on it. It says P A R or P A H 95, something like that. Uh, but anyway, ten dollars for that. I was probably a little much. And um, then I also bought this very unusual piece. Pretty sure this is Navajo. Uh, I do not know what this stone is, and he didn't either. He had no idea. It's just like a brown pebble of some kind. And it's got, um, I think this might be a little moonstone. A dolphin. <laughs> anyway, I just thought it was very charming, very unusual, and I paid 10 for that. Excuse me while I duck under here and get some of these others. Um, we have a st sterling silver thistle brooch, and that was ten dollars. Um, I didn't check to whether to see whether this one was marked. Yeah, it is marked. It is. Oh, it says Scotland on it, and it's got um, hallmarks. But oh, that's pretty cool. Let's see if I can figure out the age on it. But, it's a nice one. And then um, I got these pretty sterling silver earrings, also for ten dollars. I think these are probably Native American. I didn't um, I didn't check for marks on these either. But they're nice. And then this is a dealer that I buy very often from. She has very nice stuff. Her, her prices are borderline reasonable for me, and they're very reasonable if you're a, a consumer. Um, but she also has these, um, she puts out these tables that are like two dollar tables. And so I bought this, which I just thought was kind of neat. It's just stacked wood, claw, brass, I don't know. <laughs> it was a neat pendant. <laughs> we'll put that on a chain. Um, that was two dollars. And then this, I was very surprised she put this on a two dollar table because this is a genuine Art Deco and enamel and rhinestone brooch. I'm pretty sure. And look at the back. It has the old trombone clasp could be sterling silver. It's not marked. I haven't tested it, but it looks, if it's not sterling silver, then it must be silver plated. Eh, it might not be silver. But anyway, um, these, this type of brooch was widely copied in the 1980s. There's a maker named Catherine Popesco that's very well known for, she, she got the actual molds and designs from a factory in France, and so they were very authentic. But this is not one of hers. She did not do these kind of clasps like this. So, and it's in, I mean, the pen is a little bent, but it's in really good condition. So, $2 on that. I was very happy. Okay, let's see. Then I paid $5 for this Saint Metal. But I thought it was pretty cool because it has a relic. This is probably a piece of the saint's clothing or something. Uh, it's, it says indumentus, ex indumentus. I have no idea what that means, but it's kind of cool. Yeah, it looks like a little bit of fabric in there. <laughs> but anyway. I know when Rob and I were in Europe, we would get really excited when we'd go to these cathedrals that had the um, the saint uh, uh, relics, bits of bone and things. It was just so fascinating that they would do that, like there would be a, a finger bone that would be all encased in jewels and stuff. It was weird, like they'd take these saints and cut them up and parcel them out to different places. It just seems a very strange thing. But anyway, I had to get it. Um, let's see. Then I got this. This is another of these little Victorian lockets. This one might honestly be real, just because it's so tarnished. It's so dark and tarnished. But I don't know. It's just a little egg-shaped locket. And it ha does have a nice uh, silver chain on it. Really, really tarnished. 
So yeah, that was ten dollars. And then uh, this next lot, I bought all this next lot of jewelry. I paid seventy-five dollars for the whole lot. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and there's seven pieces. Some of them are really nice. So we have a little Navajo Roadrunner. Roadrunner pins seem to be very popular. They do really well. Now the problem with this one is it probably had a turquoise eye and somebody took out the turquoise or the turquoise was lost and somebody put in a, a rhinestone. And that's just not right. So I will probably take out that rhinestone and maybe I have some tiny, tiny little turquoise chips. So maybe I'll put in a little, I'll find one that's as round as possible and put in a little turquoise chip in his eye. He's cute. And then we got, oops, this great modernist brooch. Pretty heavy. Um, let's see. Is this marked at all? Yeah. Oh, this is Mexican silver. Yeah. Yeah, that's Mexican silver. And then this which I think is pretty old. It's got the mother of pearl um, cross. You find these in the um, Holy Land, Israel, I think. Uh, it's just marked sterling silver, but it just, it's got an old sea clasp. Probably not 19th century, but maybe early 20th century. Kind of unusual. I've never seen one quite like that. And then there's a little charm bracelet in this lot. This is very cute. It's got bow. Oh, I don't know what that is. It's some kind of soldier. It's got a guitar. It's got a sailor. I've seen this same little sailor charm on very old charm bracelets like from the 1930s. And then a pineapple. I think there's some Hawaii things here. Paddle. Oh, I know. That is not a soldier. That's King Kamehameha. I just remember that. Uh, Aloha. Yeah, this is, this is a Hawaii. And this is a really pretty Aloha Tower. Anyway. Um, might, because the charms are kind of not very evenly spaced, so I may just move the charms around a little bit, but that's pretty cute. Okay, then we have yet another Canada souvenir. Do not ask me why I keep collecting Canada souvenirs. This says silver. Nothing else on it. It's got, um, safety pin clasp, little pin, and we got a dragonfly brooch with marcasites. I love my bugs, pretty cute, and let's see, does he have any markings on him? Oh yes, he is marked, um, 925 FAS. I forget what FAS stands for. I know I always forget. I could have lots of jewelry with that marking on it. I always forget what it means. I always have to look it up. I'll write it down somewhere so you can see it. And then this super nice Zuni monochrome. You know, usually they're colorful turquoise and things, but this one is just black and white and gray. Really pretty little pendant. I don't know what kind of stones those are. I mean, obviously some onyx. I don't know what this other stone is. It seems to be like a barred stone of monochrome colors. I have to figure that out, but it's kind of unusual and really pretty. And is it signed? Oh, it is signed. Well, signed with a pictograph, an A pictograph. So 
I'll have to see if I can figure out what that is. Nice. Okay, so that was my $75 jewelry purchase. I like this dealer a lot. I liked her stuff, and she says she's there every month, and I swear I've never bought anything from her. So, okay, um, I do believe we're done with the jewelry. And I'll get some other things. These are, I believe that these are bottle openers. They're brass. They're very heavy. They'd be nice paperweights, too. This one says, Canterbury Pilgrim's to Token, St. Thomas A. Beckett. Original mold in the British Museum. And this I got off um, that same uh, jewelry dealer I was telling you about that had the $2 tables. I got these off for $2 tables. This one is a lion. Okay, then we have a compass. on a chain. <laughs> I believe it's brass and I am going to have to obviously do some serious cleaning on it because it's got, I don't know what that is. Somebody painted something in white once upon a time on this compass. But anyway, five dollar on that. We have two Mexican silver are they Mexican silver? Maybe they're not. They look like it, though. Yes, they are. They've got little eagle marks and everything. Mexican silver thimbles. $7 each. And I got another one of these little perfume refill funnels. This is all... Let me this. Yeah, this is Mexico also. And it's um, inlaid with abalone, which is kind of fun. I've never seen one like that. I've seen them decorated with this type of decoration, but I've never seen one with abalone. So, those were all $7 a piece. Okay, and then could not resist these. I'll show them to you without dropping them. Oops. Four little, tiny, tiniest little cloisonne boxes I've ever seen. And these were uh, $6 a piece. They probably won't sell for all that much. I'll probably price them at around, I don't know, I don't know, 20 something dollars a piece, maybe. But aren't they, look how adorable they are. So tiny, and they're really nicely done. I don't know how old these are. Probably not very old. But they're so cute. Look at that one. I just get carried away sometimes. I can't help myself. Um, let's see. I'll show you this one. This is a really cool pink glass biscuit jar. The brass cage and lid. Um, this looks like it could be Edwardian. Maybe even older. Now it does have some issues. It's got a missing uh, let's see, this side I think. It's missing a garland. It's got a couple of breaks here and there. But I kind of just didn't care. I loved it. Um, I'll do what I can to repair to repair the little places that are not attached, but mostly it's there. It's just missing a couple of the garlands. And I paid eight dollars for that. And we have uh, an Italian ceramic vase. It's really colorful with flowers marked Italy Aratini. I don't know if that's a place or a name. 584. There's the bottom of it. It does have <clears throat> um, a little chip right there, but it doesn't really show from the front. And I think that this is pretty old. It just looks, it 
just looks old. Eight dollars for that. Then I got this basket. I may have broken this on the way home. It is so hard to transport baskets, but um, this will be an easy, an easy fix. It may have been like this. I can't remember. I think I probably broke it on the way home. But. There's really no part of it missing, so I think that I can just get some brown thread and sew that right on there like like that. I don't know anything about this basket, but I thought it was really, really beautiful. And it's, um, if I could get it there. Um, just, I mean, look at the fineness of it, the fineness of the wounding. I don't think it's Native American. Um, I just, I'm not sure yet. I'm going to try to figure out where it possibly came from, but I, I don't know. <laughs> but, okay, uh, we got this carved wooden box. This is a pretty old one. It's really big and it's really heavy. It's got a keyhole but no key. And it's, it does open. I swear I opened it. There we go. Let's see if I can show you what the inside looks like. That's the inside. bottom. You can see it's really worn, worn red felt on the bottom. Um, but it is, it's carved all four sides and the top and it's got this beautiful peacock. And I did figure out where this was from. Is it Indonesia? Bali? Bali, Indonesia? Mm, I can't remember. But he's beautimous. And I paid uh, $20 for that, I think. I think that's right. 20 for that. Uh, and then I got this really cute little little pocket flask. I think that it's silver plated. It's possibly pewter, but I don't think so. I think it's silver plate. And it's old. It's got it's made in it says made in England and it's James Dixon and Son Sheffield. It's got some numbers. And it's got a three on it. There's what the hallmarks look like. Not actual hallmarks. But, but I thought that was cute. Paid, um, I think I paid 10 for that. And then from the same dealer, I got this cigar case. It's all like velvety on the inside. It's uh, aluminum, I think. That's kind of pretty. I'm guessing this dates to the 1980s or 90s um, when the cigar craze was going full force. Uh, what did I pay for that? Eight? Seven or eight? And then uh, this is probably the win. This was the best buy of the day. This is a Turkish wedding mirror. Uh, it wasn't until I got home that I discovered it had a mark on it. It either says, what does that say? It looks like it says 8,500, but I think it says it's either 800 or 900. I'm not 100% sure. The mark is right, right there. But anyway, it's some, some part silver. And these, uh, some of them sell in the hundreds of dollars, even the little ones. I've had one of these before, but I don't think the one I had before was actually silver. I don't know. I can't be, I could be wrong about that. And then I think this is the last 
piece. Take everything. Yeah, I think this is the last piece. It's a footstool. <laughs> this is not quite as spectacular as the last footstool I had, but it's still really cute. Uh, Needlepoint. It's got the little four little stubby legs. Wood and brass, I think. Um, I would say this is probably 1930s or 40s. And I did not pay 45 for it. I believe I paid 20 for this. The last foot still sold really quickly. It's in really good condition. So, let's see how that goes. Okay, so um, that is all the vintage I have to show you, but I will show you my progress on my rug. It's getting bigger. Gosh, it's so relaxing to work on this. If I could just sit and work on it all day, I would. <laughs> but I can't. So anyway. All right. So that is it. Thank you so much for watching. Most of these items will soon be for sale in my Etsy shop at vintagedazzle.etsy.com. I don't think anything here is going to be going on eBay. Probably not. Um... I hopefully will be getting to that craft project soon. I'm working on another craft project that I'll have to show you in my blog. And um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. I do these uh, periodically. And I also do my uh, weekly vlogs where I show you what I'm listing and what I'm selling and other stuff that's going on in my life. And if you'd like, please make a comment. I do read all the comments and reply most of the time and um, share and press that notify button so you know when I have a new video coming out. And that's it. Thanks again and I'll see you all soon. Bye bye.